Well, I think that's probably one of the nicest things I've machined so far. Yeah. Hello there YouTube, welcome back to another video by Best Laid Plans. If this is your first watch of one of my videos, hello and welcome. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you can check out some of my other videos as well. For everybody who's already subscribed, thank you very much. I really do appreciate your subscription and it really is great motivation to help me make more videos, so I do really appreciate it. Thank you. So this is part two of the mini oil can series. If you've not yet watched part one, that is where I tell you where you can download these plans and walk you through the plans as well. Do check out that video, the link is in the description below. So continuing on from part one, today we are going to make the first part, which is the main body of the oil can. As I mentioned in part one, I do not have any brass tubing as described in the plans. So I'm going to make the entire body from a single piece of 30 millimeter round brass bar. This chunk of bar will need shaping and hollowing out. And yes, I do know that is incredibly wasteful. I will be making a mountain of chips hollowing it out. However, it is the best stock I have available. So that is what I have to use. I will collect the brass chips and I'll probably use them for casting something in a later video. As you can see from the plans, the full body has an overall length of the base plus tube section of 31.5 millimeters length and a maximum diameter of 26 millimeters. The main body section is 24 millimeters and there is also a decorative groove in the base. The hollow center has a diameter of 22 millimeters which will leave a one millimeter wall and it is at a depth of 21.5 millimeters. So please follow me over to the lathe and let's begin machining. Here we are at the lathe and this is the brass stock I will be using for the body and the base. I'm mounting it in the three jaw chuck and as you can see I have not prepared the surface which will be held by the chuck. Unfortunately this will become very relevant a bit later on. As always, I add some Sharpie to the stock so that my markings can be made a bit clearer. Okay, so here you can see me take a light surface cut down the length of the material and marking the correct length and then followed by taking a measurement of the diameter. Finally, through a series of cuts, I reduced the material to the correct length and diameter. I then switched tools and changed from my roughing out tool to the parting off tool. And you can already see a nice expensive pile of brass chips building up on the tool and on the lathe ways. As you can see here, the body is starting to take shape nicely. So I mark out some of the decorative cuts on the base and then I use the parting tool to form the rough shape for the base and mark where I'll be parting it off as well. Okay, so now we move back up to the other end of the work. I switched back to the roughing tool and I also removed the tailstock live center. I then took a light facing cut and then redrilled the center hole using a large center drill. The hole was then enlarged using a twist drill. Okay, so this is where things started getting a bit funky. As you can hear, the twist drill is causing some chatter, which is due to the large stick out or overhang of the work from the chuck, 
and the lack of any other support. Okay, so to widen the hole further, I needed to use a boring bar and during that process, the boring bar actually bit into the work as well and this knocked the work very out of alignment. I decided to turn the work around in the chuck and make a light cut on the area that was going to be gripped by the jaws. I also faced the rear end so that it could seat nicely against the back of the chuck. I then flipped the work back around and continued the boring, this time a bit more carefully, and it went quite well. I checked the measurements a few times and then once happy it was time for sanding and polishing. After a small bit of profiling with a file and then some wet and dry followed by some polish, the unit actually came out really quite nice. I was very pleased with the results. And once again that brings us to the end of this video. So guys if you enjoyed the video stay tuned for the next part where I fashioned the lid and the filler cap. Well I think that's probably one of the nicest things I've machined so far. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.